Cozy Apologia is a poem written by the American poet Rita Dove. In the poem, she discusses her love for her husband Fred, set against the backdrop of Hurricane Floyd. But of course, you would know all of that already if you'd watched part one of my analysis of that poem. So why not watch part one first, a link for which is appearing on screen now as well, and then come back and watch this video. And with that out of the way, here is part two. <laughs> So the first part of my analysis of this poem ended on a bit of a cliffhanger. I left you with eight questions to look at, think about, and to answer in your own annotations. What answers did you come up with? Please do share those down in the comments section. But in just a moment, I will pass back over to Liam in the video, and he will go through and explain some of his ideas. So Liam, back over to you. By changing the topic, seemingly at random, Duff has created a conversational tone. This reinforces the idea that she wrote the poem with a specific audience, her husband Fred, in mind, but also helps us as readers to feel closer to her, almost like she's our friend. This makes us more strongly believe in the love that she has described earlier in the poem, as you know, we often believe our friends. By acknowledging the fact that hurricanes are traditionally named after women, Dove mocks Hurricane Floyd, suggesting that she does not take it seriously. By doing this, she has undermined Hurricane Floyd and downplayed its power. For some reason, calling Floyd Big Bad Floyd makes me imagine a playground bully. With this image in my mind, I feel that Dove is undermining Hurricane Floyd once more, and she is downplaying the dangerous impact that it has had. Worthless and only talent and sissy all create the dismissive tone that Dove uses when describing her childhood crushes. Because they have been discussed like this, and Fred has been spoken so highly of, Dove has made her husband seem all the more superior by contrast. Caesura and enjambment occur frequently in this stanza, as seen in the enjambment of discs and faxes, or the caesura caused by the colon in the fourth line. The effect of this is that the stanza's rhythm is heavily disrupted. I argue that this is a case of structure reflecting content, and that the reason behind the disruption is Hurricane Floyd, because as it gets closer, the amount of chaos and disruption in the poem grows. This could suggest that, despite Dove trying to mock Hurricane Floyd, nature is much more powerful than man, even to the extent that it can disrupt man's writing. The simile that Dove uses towards the end of this stanza suggests that her childhood crushes have no substance, as they are thin and hollow. Again, Fred seems superior by contrast. The stanza break makes the final word, Floyd, stand out, which emphasises its importance in the poem, as the hurricane is able to exert its influence over the poem's structure once more. The Pseudo-romantic rhyming couplets from earlier in the poem are gone, replaced with a sequence of rhyme that has no set pattern. 
This reiterates the idea established by the structure of this stanza, that Floyd brings disruption and chaos and exerts power over people. And here is the poem's final stanza. Again, it's got quite a few questions. In fact, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions. Pause if you want to have a go at answering them yourself. Floyd has been personified in cutting up a storm, which makes the hurricane sound rude rather than dangerous. In doing so, I think that Dove undermines Floyd's devastation again. Dove has compared herself to a bird. <laughs> As seen in I'm perched in my airy, an airy being uh, the nest of a bird of prey, which is usually high up in a tree or on a cliff. Now, this comparison suggests that Dove feels at home in the storm rather than being threatened by it. The list of everyday objects, twin desks, computers, hardwood floors, adds to the impression that the love shared by Dove and Fred is traditional and ordinary. And staying on that line, the use of brackets helps to make the tone of the poem seem conversational. There's a contrast between divine and the ordinariness of much of the poem, which I've sort of picked uh, content to sort of represent that. Now this contrast highlights that Dove is aware that their love is nothing special and yet despite that she cherishes it all the same. Okay so I argue that by using the negative phrase and yet Dove shows that she doesn't care what people say or think about her love for Fred. She doesn't care that it's embarrassing, or that nobody is satisfied by it, or that it's hardly newsworthy. Her love for Fred is important to her, and that is all that matters. Much like the poem's first line, the last line of the poem begins and ends with the pronouns I and you. Now this brings the poem full circle, creating a sense of completeness. I suggest that this completeness is representative of how complete the love is between Dove and Fred. Finally, the rhyme scheme of the poem has settled down. It is now A, B, A, B, C, C, D, E, D, E. So it's settled down and become more regular but it is still different to how it was at the start of the poem. This suggests that although Dove has not been hurt by Hurricane Floyd, it has had a profound impact on her all the same. And that's the whole poem analysed in depth. So now we're going to consider the three M's of the poem. And if that means nothing to you, then I recommend that you have a quick look at the second video in this series, which is the second part of my analysis for Simon Armitage's The Manhunt, a link for which is appearing on screen about now. There's my summary of the poem's meaning, and in this example, I've tried to treat it as a story and have condensed it into as little space as I think I could. But what do you think? Have I missed anything essential out? And there I've commented on the poem's mood. I think it's important to recognise that the mood seems split. It's much more positive when Fred is being discussed, and maybe slightly more critical when someone else or something else is being discussed. And there we have my ideas 
about Dove's motivation for writing the poem. I've used a bit of context as well as a few different evaluative verbs. But what ideas do you have for this section? I would love to hear them down in the comments section as I'll be honest, I'm not too convinced by what I've written, so I doubt you are either. Here we've got a theme table. Again, this is something that I've explained in my second video for this series, being the second part of my analysis of the manhunt. Simply put, I think you'd find it useful to produce a large table for these themes with a row for each of the 18 anthology poems. If I was filling out the grid for this poem, this is what I might have done. So I've ticked the power box for this poem, as I believe that this poem could be said to be about the power of nature, or the power of love, or both, really. Although Hurricane Floyd is more of a background to this text, I think it appears enough and centrally enough in the poem in order for this to be considered a nature poem. It might be a bit of an outside of the box selection, but all that means really is that it could result in a very interesting analysis or comparison. This poem is definitely about love, no question about that, but I don't really see it being about war, unless you wanted to claim that it's about the war between man and nature or something, but I think that's a bit of a stretch. I don't think that this is really a time poem. I wondered if the fact that it was about a specific time, as the poem's about a specific event, could make it count as a time poem, but I don't think that's enough, sadly. Much like time, I don't think that this is a place poem. Again, I did consider it as Hurricane Floyd only had an effect on the east coast of the USA, but there's not enough in the poem that's explicitly about that. I would say though that this is a poem about man, as it's about human relationships and how man copes with nature. I wouldn't say that this poem is about death really. Hurricane Floyd may have killed a number of people, but we don't see that in the poem. And there's not really anything particularly religious in this poem. So those are my thoughts about the themes that could apply to this poem. But what do you think? Let me know how you would fill out this grid in the comments section below. For this revision task, you're going to need two extra pieces of plain paper. On the right hand side of your screen, I've written out seven quotations. Copy them down but remember to leave plenty of space around and between each one. Once you've written all of those down, cut the quotations out and reorder them. Put the quotation that you think would be the most useful to remember at the top and the one that you think would be the least useful at the bottom and everything in the middle going from most to least useful. How you decide what useful means it's down to you. Could useful mean something that applies to the most number of themes? Could useful mean something that relates to context the most easily? Could useful mean something that covers more than just language or imagery or structure and two or three of those things instead? Once you've settled on an order, stick them back down onto your piece of paper. Around each quotation, explain why you've put it where you've put it. Now, rather than being negative about the ones further down your piece of paper, I think it would be a better idea to list all the positives. What can you say about each quotation and how much can you say about each quotation? I would hope, based on ones that I've picked, that you should be able to say at least one thing for each quotation. Right then, boom, that is Cozy Apologia done.
Now, I really do hope that this video has helped you out in some way, either because you've learned some contextual information that you didn't know before, you analysed a quotation from a different angle, or because you now feel like you have a better understanding of the poem's meaning, mood and motivation. If this video has helped you out in any way, please do let me know by dropping it a like and then remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell too. Please do also use the comments section. Feel free to ask me questions about the poem, add your own bits of analysis or, you know, tell me how amazing I am. Liking, commenting and subscribing also helps me with the YouTube algorithms and the more engagement I get on my videos, the more people that will get to see them. So if it's helped you out, help me to help even more people out. Anyway, have an awesome rest of the day and remember to take short, frequent breaks from revision as a burned out student is not a happy or successful student. So when is a poem about a hurricane not really about a hurricane? Well, it turns out a poem about a hurricane isn't really about a hurricane when it's about a guy named Fred.